Hello my fellow space engineers, I'm Sam the Fat Middle Age Man and today I bring you yet another list of mods that will add a few layers of realism and complexity to your space engineering career. My last video, the top 10 mods that every space engineer should install, did amazingly well. Much much better than I could have hoped and I cannot thank each of you enough for your support. This time though we're going to go to the other end of the spectrum. The mods we're about to discuss are some that I like to use in my survival worlds. They make the game feel more alive, if considerably more difficult. I will say now, they're not for everybody. Some of them are purely for the sadists among us. That said, each of these mods are pretty spectacular and when you combine a few of them together, well, let's just say you won't feel like you're in Kansas anymore. So without further ado, let's get started with the top 10 most painful hardcore mods that you absolutely should not install in Space Engineers. Let's get cracking. Alrighty, we're kicking things off here with a double whammy. Uh, two for the price of one. A buy one, get one free. I said you buy one, you get one free. Okay, so what are we looking at? We're looking at Space Just Got Real and Darkness Divide. Two very simple mods that make nighttime incredibly dark, especially if you use them to get. Space just got real, enhances the shadows in game, uh, just so that that weird blue tint you get around the dark side of asteroids is a lot more dark and more realistic. It also adds in the Milky Way skybox, which is quite beautiful. Darkness Divine actually doubles down on this. It makes the, the darkness in game even darker. Uh, it also tones down the emissive bloom you get when the sunlight just hits your grids in that right way. Installing either one of these mods will make your survival games much more realistic. You will actually need to use lights on your ship. You'll need to use lights on your ships, your rovers, even your base. You might even want to create yourself a simple lighthouse to guide the way. Combining both of these mods with planetary weather effect, which is sandstorms on Curtain, and you'll be wishing you'd taken that advice. Uh, as usual, I will leave a link to these mods down in the description below. I've also created another handy little Steam collection for you so you can get them all in the same place. On to number 9. What's this? Another 2 for 1 special? <gasps> That's right ladies and gentlemen, I'm a giver. For the scrappers and salvages among you, I bring you Abandoned Settlements and Wasteland Encounters which is now called Wasteland Encounters V2. There's some confusion there. Uh, these two mods are perfectly matched for your survival worlds. They will add life into an otherwise barren wasteland. So firstly, we have Abandoned Settlements. This mod adds a bunch of dilapidated ruins to your world that you can just randomly come across on your adventures. These rusty outposts are generated randomly, so you will come across a whole host of different variations. As a warning, some of these settlements will be armed, and you will need to take out those defenses before you can safely collect your salvage. The second one we have here is Wasteland Encounters, which is a perfect complement to abandoned settlements, except that instead of ruined buildings, you actually get crashed ship, ravaged by time and the elements. You can come across anything from small skiffs to entire carriers and frigate. Again, some of these may be armed, and you should be extremely careful whilst exploring. The mod does come with at least a dozen. A dozen. This mod comes with at least a dozen different blueprints, and you can absolutely get lost trying to explore them all. And yes, you can dig the ships out, restore them, and fly them home. But be warned that this will take you a long time to do, as you need to drill out every single vault before you can convert it from a station to a ship. Otherwise. <coughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we're giving away more free stuff. Another double feature, we have air traffic and surface occupation. So this duo of mods is very similar to the previous pair, uh, except these ones aren't quite so abandoned. Active ships and stations will be added to your planet, and these ones will be armed with the teeth, ready for any brave scrappers to show their heads. So air traffic simply adds a bunch of ships to the game that will have a chance to fly overhead. Usually they won't get within enough range of you to be a problem, but nothing's impossible. This makes the world you're in feel much more alive and gives you something to hunt down if you're feeling a bit piratey. Surface occupation, in a similar way, adds various stations to the world that have a variety of different features. You can come across small supply caches that hold a bunch of loot, 
you can come across medium-sized outposts that might net you some decent scrap. Uh, all the way up to uh, an actual fortress that will have no qualms about blowing you to Kingdom Cup. And the best part about these two mods, if you have them both installed, they actually work together. So if one of the ships from air traffic is flying overhead and flies near a base from surface occupation, if they are the same faction, there's a chance that they will, you know, dock up and give you some interesting comms missions. So just keep an eye out for those. It doesn't really impact you in any way, but I just thought it was a nice feature that deserves some appreciation. Sorry folks, no special offer on this one I'm afraid. We have Survival Less Likely. Survival Less Likely is a mod by Splitzy, created for his survival series of the same name, which is definitely worth a watch if you haven't already seen it. Uh, this mod does quite a few things in an effort to try and slow you down. Firstly, it nerfs the jetpack into the ground, quite literally. Whilst in planetary gravity, you pretty much can't fly at all. It does work to some extent on moons and uh, planets with lower gravity, and in space, in space it works, but you have a much smaller fuel tank, so you will need to carry around a couple of bottles just to be safe. The second thing that this mod does is it drastically reduces the amount of oxygen you get from ice. On certain planets, this can spell doom, especially planets with no breathable atmosphere. Unless you get really lucky and land near a good patch of ice to begin with, of course. This does change the way you play because for the beginning part of the game, you're going to want to ensure you've got a really good stockpile of ice before you go digging for any other resources. The third thing that this mod does is it makes it so that the large refineries can no longer chew through stone for nearly infinite resources. This means you'll need to use a basic refineries throughout the whole game, rather than just benching them as soon as you've got enough resources for its big brother, which I think is quite cool. If you get good at building sorter systems, you can actually create pretty advanced networks to automate some of the processes. Keeps things flowing smoothly. Uh, one thing to note here, uh, at the time of recording this video, the industrial refineries actually can process stone. So if you want to bypass this mechanic, you can do so, if you wish. Ding, 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 ding. Another special offer brought to you by Fat Middle-Aged Man Inc. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know. Anyway, here we are. We have another interesting combo. We have assertive cargo ships and assertive installation. So this is the part of the video where we start to really up the ante, as both of these mods will actively try to hunt you down instead of the other way around. Assertive cargo ships adds more ships that fly overhead, similar to air traffic, but this time they are much more likely to get within range of you and they will send drones to defend themselves regardless of whether you're on world or if you're up in space. Not only that, but these clever little drones will become stronger and more aggressive alongside you as the player. The stronger you are, the worse it gets. Uh, assertive installations are the ground-based equivalent to assertive cargo ships. They spawn settlements near you that will spawn waves of drones come and hunt you down. These have two modes, they're either in war mode or in peace mode, which is randomly changed throughout the game, there's like a timer I believe. You'll only really know which mode you're in if you can see their antenna and work out how far away they are. Uh, during wartime, the base antenna for these installations will be increased to their maximum and the drones will target anything within that range. During peacetime, the antenna range is reduced drastically and you basically you get given the opportunity to repair and prepare for the next wave. Both of these are strong additions to your game and they force you to build more defensively. You can't just like mass things up. You're gonna need thicker walls and you're gonna need more guns, but you also need to reside yourself to the fact that sometimes even that won't save you. Yeah, for this one I recommend setting up a bunch of unmanned turret towers around the area of your base, if for no other purpose than to act as an early warning system. Have you ever thought that your life could be with more stress? Would you like to assemble and operate unnecessarily large pieces of heavy machinery? Do you long to visit the center of the earth? Well, look no further, friend. The Deep Ores mod has you covered. This mod buries those pesky ore deposits deep, deep down within the crust of the planet. This means you're either gonna need another mod to increase the range of your ore detectors, or get extremely lucky with some blind digging. Some of the more common ores 
they'll spawn close to the surface between 50 and 300 meters but some of the more rarer precious resources like gold magnesium yeah they can be as deep as one and a half thousand meters which is insane right to counter this the mod developers have drastically buffed how big the deposits are so you're not going to be drilling down over a kilometer to just get a measly sliver of gold instead the size of them will vary between 150 and 400 meters wide or deep you're gonna need to seriously up your drilling game with this one you should try adding in darkness divine to add an even more intense experience okay as a bit of a wild card here we have the aerodynamic physics mod this one has been around for a good long while and has seen numerous improvements over the last six years this one will change the way you build any kind of vehicle including ropes adding wind and drag to the game you're gonna need to pay some serious attention to physics applied to your craft for example a small fast rover will be much more prone to flipping on a sharp turn unless you add a spoiler at the rear to handle the added forces Likewise, you might want to add some wings to your flying ships to allow them to more easily lift off or bank in a certain direction. Ships bound for space will also have a really nasty surprise if they attempt to come back to the planet too quickly. The re-entry burn-up is absolutely real, and you'll be wishing you paid more attention in astronaut flight school. Okay, things are getting serious now. In at number three, we have the Daily Needs Survival Kit. This mod adds a few character needs to the game, such as hunger and thirst, as well as allowing your character to become exhausted if they try to run for too long without taking a break. Seriously, you thought you could run 45 kilometers at max sprint and arrive without so much as catching your breath? Come on. So this mod is a really fun one. You land on the planet, straight away you notice you've got less than half of your daily needs bars filled up. You're gonna need to find food and water, and you're going to need to do it before the sun goes down because of all those darkness mods we installed. Luckily, your engineer isn't too fussy and with some quick thinking you can create some blocks that will gladly make you some delicious delicacies out of gravel and ice. Not only that, but as you eat a drink, you will instantly <laughs> yourself, which you can then recycle into more wonderful food and drink. What more could you ask for? What, you, you actually want more? Alright, okay. How about being able to grow your own fruits and vegetables, as well as clone animal meat to make yourself a delightful meal, the likes of which even McDonald's are jelly. Yeah, I thought you'd like that. Everyone loves a good farming simulator. Don't even lie and say you haven't thought about it. No? No. No, of course not. Me either. Of course. In addition to all that, this mod actually gives you a reason to build a bed and to use it. This will allow you to actually boost your stamina up to 125, provided you've remembered to add in the necessary tank. There is a handy user guide located on the mod page for specific information on how to use this, by the way. Always handy to know the various ways you're failing at life, am I right? We're almost there, just a couple more. For the penultimate spot on our list, we have the Ore Scrap mod. This one mod can cause utter chaos if you aren't careful as it stops you from simply grinding down a block and being able to rebuild it somewhere else for no cost. Whenever you grind down a block, you lose anywhere from 10% to 55% of the resources from that block. And they are turned into various types of scrap that you have to first melt down in the refinery and then reproduce in the assembler. It sounds like a nightmare, right? I mean, why would anyone install this? Well, I find that it actually makes me plan my every move a lot better. If I know that I'm going to run into hostiles or there's a chance that I'm going to crash, I'm going to make sure I bring a couple of different components with me to ensure I've got enough to repair with. I should be doing that anyway, but this mod really enhances that need. I'll also fly my ships a lot more carefully, as merely like dinging the cargo containers while mining can spell absolute disaster if you're not paying attention. All in all, it actually makes you a better engineer to have these skills and not need them than the other way around. Okay, before we finish up, as usual, I'd just like to take a second here to say thank you for watching this video. Please be sure to give it a thumbs up for the algorithm. Uh, be sure to subscribe to help me build my channel. As a reminder, the first 1,000 subscribers will receive warm thoughts. You still grow. With that out of the way, let's jump onto the number one hardcore challenge mod for space engineers. 
Oh, come on. You know I had to end it with another two-for-one special, right? Here we have two of the deadliest NPC mods you can install. The first one we're going to talk about is Reaver's Terror of the Birth. These bad boys will kill you. They are big, they're deadly, and they are... Annoying. Yes, much unlike our Mass Effect friends, the Space Engineers universe is also due for a new cycle, and the Reavers are more than happy to oblige. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, as well as a bunch of different tactics to try and get to you. One of them literally just tries to ramp you, uh, which can be really deadly if you don't have some kind of shield mod or exceptionally thick heavy armor. Generally, Reavers are limited to space and moons, but they will occasionally spawn within planetary priority as well. So just be careful out there. Uh, the next one we're going to go through is the Corruption, which, similar to the Reavers, it adds a ton of new enemies to the game. The difference here is that they all have a ton of different behaviours, rather than simply trying to end your engineer's existence, which, of course, they will still try to do. Uh, the behaviours of these ships can be anything from a hacker drone that will try and take ownership of your grid or turn off defences, to a cargo transport, all the way up to a gravity cannon. The list of these ships and the behaviors is absolutely insane, but there is a link you can find on the mod page, which I'll link below. Well, that's it folks. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. As always, I've taken the liberty of adding all of these mods into a Steam collection for you. The link for which is down in the description below, as well as all of the current links to all of the individual mods. If you think that I've missed out on any clear mod choices for this video, be sure to let me know in the comments. Bear in mind that this is all my own opinion. If you've got other ideas, I would love to hear them. Again, if you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to stay up to date with all of my latest videos. Until then, keep on being awesome. Later, guys.